Uh, very good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Very, uh, thank you very much for joining us at this late hour. Uh, as you are aware, uh, there have been fast-paced developments in Ukraine since today morning, and of course, they've been following the developments over the last few days. Uh, so today, uh, we have had the privilege of having with us uh, Foreign Secretary Shri Harshvardhan Shringla uh, to talk to us about our primary focus of the government today, which is on the safety and security of the Indian nationals and their uh, evacuation from um, Ukraine. Uh, I will request uh, Foreign Secretary Sir to make a few opening, brief opening remarks and after that we will take uh, some questions. So over to you Sir. Namaskar and uh, good evening. Thank you for joining us at this late hour. Uh, you have all seen the sudden and serious developments in Ukraine today. As we speak, there is a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Security chaired by the Prime Minister in session to take stock of this situation. Uh, Prime Minister has conveyed at the CCS meeting that the topmost priority of the government is the safety and security of Indian nationals, including Indian students, and their evacuation from Ukraine. Prime Minister is scheduled to speak to the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, shortly. External Affairs Minister will be speaking to the foreign ministers of the countries neighboring Ukraine, namely Poland, Romania, Slovakia, and Hungary. Earlier this evening, he also spoke to the EU high representative, as well as the foreign minister of the UK. A number of steps have been taken over the last month or so to deal with the emerging situation in Ukraine, including the contingencies that could arise and I am referring to the situation uh, as we see uh, today. We started the registration of Indian nationals in the Ukraine about a month ago. Our embassy uh, anticipated um, the need to connect and be in contact with all Indian students in the Ukraine. Uh, based on the online registration process that was conducted by our embassy, we found that there were close to about 20,000 Indian nationals, including students uh, in the Ukraine. Of these, uh, about 4,000 have since left the country. We have taken a number of measures to facilitate flights out of the country. This includes removing the cap on the number of passengers that could fly out of Ukraine that was imposed by the civil aviation authorities of both countries. There was a 440 uh, numbers that could fly out every week. That cap was removed. We also ensured that uh, the number of flights were augmented rapidly from about twice a week to about two flights a day. And that enabled us to get at least 4,000 of our citizens and students out. We should also remember that there were a number of other options available uh, through uh, flights to Dubai and Istanbul and other places from Cape. Our embassy in Ukraine continues to be functional, is rendering all assistance possible to Indian nationals there, notwithstanding the fairly complicated and evolving situation that we find ourselves in. The embassy has issued a number of advisories in recent days. Today itself, the embassy has issued three advisories, and these uh, provide advice to Indian nationals uh, on the situation as it evolves, uh, travel towards safer places, including western parts of the country uh, that will facilitate the exit by road and other means, uh, safety precautions that our citizens could take, etc. Our ambassadors also sent a personal message to all Indian citizens in Ukraine, uh, providing uh, advice. Uh, we are consulting universities, student contractors in the process of uh, providing for the welfare and safety of our students. Uh, a control room has been set up in EMEA. Now, this control room, uh, control room has been functioning for the past seven or eight days, but we have uh, seriously augmented the strength. Uh, we have uh, over 20 officers that are manning these control rooms, uh, this control room in the Ministry of External Affairs on a 24 7 basis. Uh, just to give an example, till now and just today, we have answered 980 calls and dealt with. Uh, some um, 
850 emails that were sent to this control room. Our embassy in Kiev has also set up a helpline, 24-7 helpline center. Uh, the other measure that we have taken is that we have dispatched Russian-speaking officers to Kiev and to the country's uh, neighboring Ukraine. Russian-speaking because the language there is Russian. If you are not Russian-speaking, your utility is far more limited. Uh, some of these officers are already reached and are functioning. Some will be reaching shortly. Um, we have also asked our embassies, our ambassadors in the countries neighboring Ukraine. And I mentioned these, uh, Poland, Romania, Slovakia and Hungary, to send teams of their officers to the border areas with Ukraine to facilitate the exit of Indian nationals from Ukraine to permit them to come into their countries so where they can be safely evacuated back to India. Uh, and MEA teams are on their way as we speak to Zahoni border post in Hungary, Krakowiec land border in Poland, Visni Nemke in Slovak Republic and Suseva land border in Romania. We have also asked some of our officers to go across and set up camp offices in Ukraine close to the border. Two of the places we have identified are Lviv, which is close to Poland, and Chernivitsky, which is close to Romania. And here, I think, uh, will be sort of uh, facilitation points. Now, our embassy has, you know, it's a very complicated, very evolving situation. Uh, it's obviously, uh, you know, certain areas there's conflict. Uh, we can't have uh, a single sort of advisory that fits all situations. Uh, we have to evolve, we have to see where we are and how this, how and which part of the country are located and what the situation is. Uh, generally, if uh, we, we are advising that if you find yourself in a certain difficult situation, then you should remain in secure areas and shelters, etc. If you can, you move westwards uh, towards the borders uh, with some of the countries I mentioned. And these advisories will be continuously issued. These helplines are for that purpose, so that depending on the situation, that advice can be given. Um, one important step that we have taken because a number of our students were reluctant to leave because uh, the authorities, the university authorities had said that the classes must be offline. We have now persuaded all the universities and institutions to allow online classes and therefore students can actually leave without uh, uh, having to face uh, uh, you know, the uh, strain of not being able to or missing out on their classes. As I said, the situation on the ground is difficult and is, uh, is uh, rapidly evolving. I want to assure, take this opportunity to assure all Indian citizens, uh, including students in Ukraine and their family members, that we will take all possible steps to bring back, to bring you back safe and sound, bring your wards back safe and sound. Um, uh, Prime Minister has specifically stated that uh, the Ministry of External Affairs should do everything possible in, in coordination, of course, with other ministries involved to ensure that facilitation on the lines that I discussed, uh, helplines, control rooms, uh, officers available, uh, shelters, uh, accommodation, facilitation in every manner is done for our citizens. Uh, we, of course, uh, uh, had a few citizens outside our embassy also. Uh, I'm told that at least uh, all of them, uh, I'm talking about numbers of about 200 to 250 of our citizens, have been accommodated in uh, schools in the area. Uh, the embassy has been asked to facilitate uh, their requirements. And depending on the situation, we will um, have them evacuated uh, westwards. Um, as you know, this government uh, has been very focused when it comes to the welfare of Indian citizens uh, in difficult situations around the world. Uh, we have had a lot of uh, experience in facilitating and arranging such evacuations. Uh, the Vande Bharat mission, which is the largest repatriation exercise of its kind, was undertaken during the peak of COVID times. Uh, more recently, we had Op, Op Devi Shakti, which is involving the evacuation of Indian nationals from Afghanistan, from a conflict situation. Uh, we will obviously um, have to take into account that every situation presents its own challenges, and uh, we have to deal with it uh, accordingly. So uh, perhaps I'll stop here and see if there are any questions. Thank you very much. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Uh, please introduce yourselves before taking the questions. Maybe I'll start with you right here. I saw your Nehan go first and then we'll... Sir, I'm Akhilesh Suman from Samsa TV. Uh, you know, Russia and US, both are strategic partners. And in this point of time, 
are we playing any role talking to both US and Russia to stop the war and you know create a situation when there can be a congenial atmosphere in the region? Take a few more. Or? A couple of more. Uh, yeah, please. Come back. So, would you like to make any comments on the sanctions being imposed on Russia? Does that bring more difficulty for us as far as our military acquisitions are concerned? Thank you. Nainima from Ukraine. So, uh, my question is uh, regarding India's consistent position when it comes to country's uh, territorial sovereignty regarding this invasion, a country's territorial sovereignty is being violated. What does New Delhi has to say on that? I'm Siddhan from beyond. And, uh, you, uh, yeah, fourth. Meta from DD News. Sir, uh, some states have also set up control rooms. So, is the NEA coordinating with the state control rooms as well? Where, the, where do those people who reach out to state control rooms, uh, does it reach the MEA? How does it work? Uh, one. I'll take one last one. Okay. I'll come back to it. So, Hasini Heather from the Hindu Foreign Secretary. Um, we know that, uh, uh, as you said, there have been conversations between the EAM, the European Union counterparts, the UK as well. Um, I wanted to just touch on Nainima and Sidan's questions on the UN Security Council resolution that the US says it is going to bring. Um, uh, has India seen a draft of the resolution that is coming about? Uh, so far, India has uh, the statements India has made have not criticized Russia, have not uh, have referred to legitimate security interests uh, of all parties, and has not actually affirmed the territorial integrity of Ukraine. So, I just wanted to know if India's position on any of these is likely to change given this UNSC resolution. So, so let us start with uh, Akhilesh's uh, question. Uh, which is, uh, you know, whether we are playing any role um, with our strategic partners. It is true that uh, India has maintained uh, the best of relations with uh, uh, all countries concerned, uh, whether it's the United States, whether it's, Ru whether it's Russia, or whether it's the European Union. Um, we have been in touch with all parties concerned, as you can imagine, both as a member of the Security Council, as a country with a lot at stake in that region, uh, as a country with so many of its citizens uh, in a vulnerable uh, zone, uh, we have been uh, in close touch with all concerned. Uh, External Affairs Minister was in Europe recently where he's had a number of meetings with his interlocutors. Uh, uh, this evening, as I said, uh, Prime Minister will be speaking to President Putin. Uh, External Affairs Minister himself uh, has spoken to a number of uh, uh, ministers uh, from the European Union and uh, we'll be speaking to those ministers, of, those of his counterparts who are from neighboring countries, which is very important, uh, primarily for our own uh, citizens and their uh, safe evacuation out of uh, Ukraine. So uh, our uh, uh, focus in the UN Security Council has always been on de-escalation of tensions, on diplomatic dialogue as the only way forward, as, uh, and uh, we've also emphasized on the existing agreements, the MINS agreements, the Normandy format, We've also uh, obviously placed uh, the highest importance to the safety and security of our nationals in the Ukraine in our statements in the UN Security Council. And so uh, in all of this, I think uh, uh, we have, as I said, maintained that people need to talk to each other, the parties need to be engaged, and is, if there's anything that we can do to facilitate that engagement, we are more than happy to do. Um, and, and I think, uh, um, you know, as we go along, uh, you know, we will uh, try and be as helpful as possible. Um, uh, Nayanima's uh, question uh, on uh, sanctions uh, on Russia, uh, you are aware that uh, certain uh, unilateral sanctions were already uh, existing as far as Russia was concerned. Some additional sanctions have been imposed uh, by the United States, by the EU, by Australia, Japan, uh, uh, the UK, among others. Uh, but. Uh, this is an evolving situation, as I said, and we have to see what sort of impact these sanctions uh, will have uh, on our own interests. Uh, clearly, uh, we need to study this carefully because any sanctions will have impact on our existing relationship. Uh, I think it would, be, it would uh, only be correct to acknowledge that factor, but the actual impact of the sanctions needs to be studied carefully, and we will do that. Uh, Siddhant, I think uh, you spoke about a country's sovereignty um, I think uh, 
uh, that question was also asked uh, by Suhasini uh, when you talked about our position in Security Council, the possibility of uh, a UNSC resolution that would be tabled uh, uh, that uh, on the evolving situation. Uh, we have seen a draft resolution. Uh, I'm told that that would undergo uh, considerable changes. Uh, we will wait to see um, uh, the uh, shape that this resolution takes before we can pronounce ourselves in the position that we would take on this issue. So uh, it is, as I said, an evolving situation both on the ground and in the United Nations. Uh, we are uh, at the cutting edge of many of the issues, many of the areas where these issues will be discussed and will be considered by the international community. And we will certainly play our due role in that regard. Yes, uh, yes. So, excuse me. I think Nita had asked this question about state control rooms. Uh, I can tell you that a number of uh, chief secretaries of states have spoken to me. Obviously, uh, states are concerned uh, about uh, you know students, about uh, citizens from their states who are in Ukraine. We are coordinating very closely in that regard. Uh, it's only fair to tell you uh, that uh, we have set up uh, uh, you know control rooms and teams all over. We have set up uh, control rooms in Hungary, in Poland, in Slovakia, and Romania. All this information is out in the public domain. Uh, but early in the day, uh, I did take the, uh, I did whoever contacted me, I immediately sent out uh, the details to them in our state uh, governments. Uh, our uh, external publicity division has put all this out in the public domain. And uh, all this uh, is, is, uh, is uh, information that our states can use. Uh, we are, as I said, in close touch with all concerned who have a stake uh, in this issue, uh, whether it is parents, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, family members, uh, or whether it is uh, state governments, uh, members of parliament, those uh, who are uh, concerned about this. And I just mentioned, uh, Prime Minister chaired uh, a meeting, is, is chairing a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Security. Uh, they are examining all aspects of the situation, in particular, what sort of assistance, what sort of uh, support that we can render uh, to our citizens in this uh, time of uh, need. And uh, clearly, uh, you know, involving the state governments in this activity is a part of that effort. Thank you, sir. Uh, next round of question I'll take here. Yeah. Then I'll come to you. Uh, sir, I'm Manish from TV9 Bharatwar. My question is that there are many political leaders are saying that if we had taken a little bit of action, like you have told me that we had collected data for a month before, but the advisory was released on 15 February. तो क्या अगर हमने थोड़ा पहले एक्शन लिया होता तो शायद हम ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा स्टूडेंट्स को निकाल पाते और अभी हालात थोड़े बेहतर होते एंड चूँकि आप लैंड बॉर्डर का सर आप डिस्कस करें तो थोड़ा डिटेल अगर दे देंगे कि बच्चे कैसे उन चारों नेबर कंट्री जो लैंड बॉर्डर्स हैं वहाँ तक कैसे पहुँचेंगे क्या वो रूट्स रूट सेफ है आ. Sir, uh, once, uh, what is the kind of message we are likely to carry to Russia when the Prime Minister is expected to speak? And secondly, sir, we have heard the Ukrainian ambassador to India saying that they are disappointed with India's stand. Is there a reaction uh, to that or a clarification to that, sir? Uh, sir, Maha Siddiqui from CNN News 18. Uh, sir, is the call by the Prime Minister to the Russian President Vladimir Putin being made at the request of Ukraine or is India making this call because India at the moment is also a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council? Sir, uh, over here. Time's now. Sir, enjoy. Sir, you said Prime Minister is speaking with the President of Russia, Mr. Putin, tonight. Is he going to make any other calls to any other major leaders uh, either today, tonight, or sometime tomorrow morning? Sandeep, you are in India. Sir, normally in the situation when there is an evacuation, the Air Force is also involved. Is there a situation that the Air Force is also involved in the evacuation in this evacuation? Sir. हाँ पहले मैं मनीष जी का प्रश्न का उत्तर देना चाहता हूँ ये स्थिति जो हम देख रहे हैं ये काफी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सिचुएशन है इसमें जो अगर हम देख सकते थे कि कैसे इवॉल्व होता था 
तो शायद और भी और भी देशों जो इन्वॉल्व हैं इसमें वो भी उसी हालत से उसी प्रकार से देख सकते थे तो ये मैं कहना चाहता हूँ कि ये इवॉल्विंग सिचुएशन बनने के कारण से एग्जैक्ट एक्शन जो आपने कहा मतलब बाद में जो आप आप अब अगर हम रेट्रोस्पेक्ट में देखा देखें तो हमें लगेगा कि एक्शन पहले भी ले सकते थे पर सिचुएशन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है और इवॉल्विंग है उस उसी हिसाब से हमने अपने मतलब प्रेपरेशन uh, किए थे ये भी देखना होगा कि काफ़ी हमारे जो स्टूडेंट्स थे उनको एडवाइजरी देने के बावजूद भी वो देख रहे थे कि अगर क्लासेस मिस होंगे अगर क्लासेस ऑफलाइन होंगे तो क्लासेस उसके उसके भी मतलब नतीजा होगा उनके ऊपर और क्या ऑप्शंस थे उनके क्या उपाय थे तो इसमें हमने काफ़ी इनके साथ हम हम इनके साथ संपर्क में थे इनको एडवाइस देते रहे और जैसे मैंने कहा जो वहाँ से निकलना चाहते थे वो निकल गए जिसको फैसिलिटेट करना था हमने फैसिलिटेट करवाया और एडवाइजरीज भी अगर आप देखें पंद्रह तारीख को जो एडवाइजरी इशू हुआ था जिसमें हमने कहा कि यू कुड इंडियन सिटीजन नॉन इसेंशियल इंडियन सिटीजन कैन लीव द कंट्री तो हमने काफ़ी एडवांस नोटिस दिया था इसमें तो मेरे ख्याल से जो सिचुएशन आज है वो इवॉल्विंग सिचुएशन के कारण से है और ये भी हम कह सकते हैं कि जो हमारे जो नागरिकों का सुरक्षा है उनके वेल बींग है और उनके जो इवैक्यूशन के जो अरेंजमेंट्स हैं वो हम पूरी तरह संभाल लेंगे और इसमें कोई घबराने की बात नहीं होगी और जो सेफ रूट्स हैं जैसे आपने कहा वो भी आइडेंटिफाई हो गए हैं मैंने आपको बताया था कि बाय रोड अगर कीव से आपको जाना हो तो पोलैंड के लिए नौ घंटे का रास्ता है और रोमेनिया के लिए करीब बारह घंटे का रास्ता है तो वो रास्ता भी मैप आउट हो गया है और वो रास्ते में जो पॉइंट्स मैंने बताया जैसे कि लिवीव है चेनेविस्की है वहाँ भी हमने हमारे टीम्स जो रशियन स्पीकिंग ऑफिसर हैं वो टीम्स हम भेज रहे हैं वो वहाँ पे होंगे ताकि वहाँ से भी जो मदद और सहायता हम दे सकते हैं हमारे नागरिकों को वो हम ज़रूर देंगे विथ रिगार्ड टू आई थिंक सुधीर रंजन जी क्वेश्चन Uh, about uh, message to uh, other conversation between rpm and russian uh, president i think uh, it would be uh, uh, difficult uh, to um, let us say guess in advance as to what nature of that conversation would be i think we could say certainly say that uh, president putin would provide his perspective on the situation uh, that he would uh, brief the prime minister and and i think that conversation would obviously be around the situation that we see today but beyond that uh, uh, to try and second guess what would be the conversation i think right now would be not correct but needless to say as it uh, as the conversation takes place we will be keeping you informed of the uh, nature of that conversation um there was a question about uh, you know the you, uh, same i think you had asked about the disappointment expressed by the ukrainian ambassador honestly speaking we have been ta- in touch with him uh, we have uh, been in touch with many of our diplomatic colleagues i did not see any disappointment that he had expressed as far as we are concerned uh, and uh, we will certainly um, you know uh, be as as i said in touch at very very high levels uh, the external affairs minister is expected to speak uh, to the ukrainian foreign minister this evening tonight uh, and, uh, and obviously um, you know we are speaking to all concerned so uh, i don't think there should be any sense that uh, we are speaking to one party and not to other um i think mahas question was again uh, you know um the uh, whether the call i think the call was in the behest you said of ukraine um well i mean we the conversation is taking place because of the reasons i mentioned uh, we have a stake in the situation uh, we are a concerned party uh, as both uh, as uh, you know a country that has close relations with uh, with russia with ukraine with the european union with all concerned we also have stakes in the region economic stakes we have people involved our citizens are there uh, we are members of the un security council i mean all of these factors uh, have um are relevant to uh, that conversation that is taking place um 
Sanjoy, you said, uh, are there any other calls expected? I think, uh, again, it's premature. Uh, obviously, uh, there will be calls in the days to come. There will be conversations and uh, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, you know, be open to, to any um, such uh, uh, interaction uh, with any of our colleagues in the international community. Um, and uh, Sandeep ji, aapne poochha ki uh, aise sthitiya mein um, Indian Air Force ko soochna di jati hai, aapne bilkul sahi kaha, humne Ministry of Defense ko, uh, uh, hum Ministry of Defense ke saath sampark mein hai, uh, unko hume, humne puri soochna di hai ki kya sthiti hai aur kya evolving situation hai, aur humne ye bhi kaha hai ki agar zarurat pade to humari airlift capacity ki uh, 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 ka, uh, matab, uh, provision rakhna hoga unko aur agar uh, uh, aisi siti ho to hamari uh, air force ki aircraft bhi wahan pe ja sakti hai uh, par hamari aur bhi upay hain jaise ki hamare commercial aircraft hai to uh, all options are on the table so thank you very much for that uh, i think we'll we'll you have one okay we'll take last no uh, second question please we'll take. just take a last couple of questions uh, Sir, um, I am not sure if I the जरूर स्थिति बदल गया है ग्लोबली टेंशंस तनाव की आ, हमने देखा है कि काफी मतलब इसमें स्थिति काफी गंभीर हो गई है आ, इसके आ, ये परिस्थिति में हम क्या कर सकते हैं हमारे जितने भी ऑप्शंस हैं वो सब खुले हैं आ, सभी के साथ हमारे संबंध हैं सभी के साथ हमारे संपर्क भी है और आ, जो करना है हमारे आ, हित में हमारे देश के हित में और हमारे uh, Nagriko ke uh, interest me, hum zarur karenge. Thank you. So, thank you very much for your presence here today, sir. Uh, glad you could make our time from today to uh, brief the general community. I also would like to thank the presence of Dr. Adar Swaika, Joint Secretary, looking after uh, Eurasia desk in the division, who joined us during the presentation. Thank you to particularly all of you to joining us so late in the evening. Uh, good evening. And, and uh, let me sir. assure you that we will keep you posted of developments. You know, it is not a one-off thing. I'm trying to tell you that it is an evolving situation. Uh, you know, things could happen. It's also complicated. Um, and we will certainly uh, try and uh, keep you posted with the maximum transparency. Uh, already we have, as I said, uh, we are issuing advisories. We are issuing uh, uh, statements uh, almost on a daily basis, if not an hourly basis and uh, we will um, be in touch with you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.